My family originally settled in this area in the 1850s. There's been a connection since then. We've always been small landholders. It's early morning in Western Victoria and Tom Drive is up and at it. But after generations of working this land, Tom fears his family's legacy is now under threat. The government seems to be in such a rush, they do seem to be making poor decisions on the run. Um, we've pointed a lot of problems out to them and they just seem to push on regardless. Beyond these trees and just a few hundred metres away from Tom's family home is where the Australian energy market operator and the Victorian government with Ausnet plan to build a small section of massive transmission lines with 85 metre tall towers. So it was devastating to be honest. We were, uh, we'd poured the slab for the new house. Obviously Ausnet and the state government had, had already planned their route through our area but no one bothered to tell us through the whole permit process and all the rest. And then we, um, we put, put the slab down and we received a letter and realised something was going on. Across the country, landholders are battling the prospect of new above ground high voltage transmission lines that authorities say are critical to transporting the influx of renewable energy coming online around the nation. People are really worried about their ability to live in their homes, their, their ability to run their farming businesses, you know, the impact that it will have on the community and the damage it will have to the native environment. Consulting on new transmission developments is a hard and challenging task and actually hasn't been done in Victoria for around 50 years. Uh, we've been out um, on farms um, in towns in Western Victoria, uh, in council meetings and assessed over 600 um, individual stakeholder submissions. The energy market operator is planning to build major rewiring projects across the nation. In Victoria, two transmission projects running a total of 400 kilometres from Melbourne's outer suburbs to the New South Wales border are facing fierce opposition. The Victoria New South Wales Interconnect West Project, or VNI, and the more advanced Western Renewables Link. I think if VNI West goes ahead, it will be a giant public policy failure. This will be a very grave mistake. What we find is that the VNI West program, which unlocks $1.4 billion of benefits to consumers uh, through lower costs and improves reliability, it allows access to more renewable energy to connect into Australia's electricity system, in fact, enough to power 2.3 million homes. Bruce Mountain recently resigned from an advisory role with the Victorian government's rebooted State Electricity Commission. He and the Victorian Energy Policy Centre have analysed AEMO's proposal for transmission in the state and are putting their reputation on the line with an alternative solution, which they say delivers more renewables cheaper and has less impact on landowners. We estimate the cost of ours is about half of the cost in terms of dollars out the door. In terms of environmental and social impacts and visual impacts, a third to a quarter. Bruce Mountain's report estimates the total price tag for AEMO's extended VNI West plan, which includes the WRL, will blow out to $11 billion. And transmission charge costs in electricity bills could increase by 15% for households and 35% for industrial energy users. Under Mountain's Plan B, the increase could be less. Essentially, our plan uses the existing Victorian grid, upgrades it, uh, rather than building a whole new trunk line through new territory at a much higher voltage than is commonly used in the state. The issues that we see in the plan that are being proposed are uh, one, uh, the in inaccurate estimate of costs, two, uh, not being able to unlock the vast amounts of renewable energy that exist in Western Victoria and that are needed for uh, as our coal-fired power stations close down, and three, some real construction risks. The only big winner is the developer and owner of the transmission infrastructure uh, who gets a regulated charge for the assets that they'll build. Everyone else is paying a price, and that is surely not acceptable. Tom Drive's bank has already told him how much AEMO's plan will cost him. 
His property falls within the route of the Western Renewables Link. The banks enlightened us that they had to devalue our house block by $1.5 million, so that's our equity in this house block taken away from us through no fault of our own. We've been through the process with Osnet and the state government and we're trying to work out why we would be left carrying that loss, but no one has any in intentions of fixing the, the problem. Look, let's be clear, I'm not the engineer here. AEMO uh, has the experts at hand, the engineers, the economists, uh, that have considered a whole range of options and alternatives. Victoria's Energy Minister says affected landholders will be compensated. If you're hosting a kilometre of easement on your land, you're going to be getting $200,000 uh, over that 25-year period on top of your compensation. Uh, for many landowners, and some host three or four kilometres of uh, easement, uh, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's cold comfort for Marcia McIntyre. Her family's farm is in the proposed path of the VNI West. There'll be destructive construction practices going on on your land that will be completely disruptive to normal farming. And that will go on for years, we understand. And so the impact of this loss of productivity will affect eventually the cost of food production, which is then passed on to you know, everybody, all consumers and um, the cost of living essentially. Over time, the energy market operator has painted themselves into a corner. I think these plans that they first fleshed out 13 years ago took account of a different world when wind and solar costs were much higher than they were now and perhaps interconnection had more merit. The times have changed. My own community, my own electorate of Mill Park, has massive transmission lines that cut through the electorate uh, from taking power from the Latrobe Valley uh, through uh, uh, communities uh, through to Mill Park and the like, taking it to all parts of the state. Uh, it, is, it is something that is necessary. It's Communities affected by the new transmission lines have formed the Regional Victoria Power Alliance. They're taking the Victorian government to the Supreme Court to challenge ministerial orders used to fast track the projects. They've raised about half a million dollars to fund their efforts. About 100 people have even donated their $250 state government energy rebates to the cause. Mom, kick it here. What we have is too important and it's too serious to let, to let a project go ahead with such enormous ramifications. And, and it doesn't need to happen when there's you know, other options out there. Landholders like mum of six, Marcia McIntyre, have thrown their support behind Bruce Mountain's plan for transmission in the state. Marcia insists they're not anti-renewables. This ultimately is for our children and it's for their children. It's the next generation that you're always thinking of, and it is, it's their legacy. 